Hi guys, this is Karthik and welcome back to the channel. So it's been a while since I've uploaded a nice video, isn't it? And I had quite a many requests to actually make a video on my try library that I've created. And I really respect that try library, although it's not something super special. But I guess it it's nice to look at the code and the code is clean. Plus it can perform all the usual try uh, functionalities like insert a word, find a word, and a few more functionalities that are quite oftenly seen. Uh, moreover, the try is serializable, so you could build a try from a file, uh, a list of a lot of words. In fact, I have a sample here that I'll be showing to you. So let's open this first. Yeah. So this try is basically serializable. Once I build a try, I can serialize it into a file. I could even serialize it and transmit over the network. And you could have a particular string and you could deserialize that string to make a try once again and i think that's a nice feature to have so basically you can build a data structure and transmit it over the network this is a very common technique serializing and deserializing data structures for example if i had um, what can we say maybe a linked list or some kind of data structure that is allocated on the heap and you want to recreate that on some other application maybe transmit it over the net to someone else and that person also wants to recreate the same data structure. So serialization is a uh, technique of converting the data structure into a string format or some format that can be easily transmitted over the network or stored in a file such that you can take that thing and deserialize it to get the same data structure once again. That is the point of serializing and deserializing. So here you can see that you know, I have this library here and let's look at the functions. So this is a try data structure library which is serializable. I can create a try using list of words or an empty try. How useful. I can insert words to the try. Convert the try to a list of words of course. Uh, and this is done using depth for search. I use a DFS site find out all the words in the try. That's it. That's how you convert the try to a list of words. Now I could have serialized it using uh, by just having the try and finding all the words in the try and uh, maybe writing them out separated by a comma. However, that is a costly way because then all the words would be requiring memory and I don't want to waste so much memory in the serializable form because imagine transmitting that over the net. That means you are basically uh, creating a bandwidth issue. The time, transmission time would be high if your size, serialized size is high. So what I did, I used a smarter way of serializing the try and uh, let me show you. So I had this test data. These are a lot of English words. It's nearly 4.04 MB and this is basically a dictionary kind of thing. There are a lot of words in here, probably an entire dictionary, almost 30, 40 or more thousands or maybe lakh words in here. I used these words to build a try and the try represented all these words. Okay. Then I serialized the try into this particular file and you will see the difference in the sizes of these two files. This is 4.04 MB, this actual file and this one, the after serializing it's 2.31. So you can see it uh, compressed the larger file into almost half the size. And let me show you this particular file as well. Oh, but uh, this is not understandable like here, but this was a simple algorithm to remove the redundancy and currently my goal is not to explain what exactly I did in there but this is exactly the same words represented in a different format and my try library could actually take this kind of format and convert this particular file back to this file or basically use this file to create a try and that's the idea here. Okay. So first of all, size reduction is there and you can see that the entire try got converted into a string. Yeah. And now let's see what else it can do. It can check how many words in the try have a given prefix. So I could check how many words start with a or how many star uh, words start with app, app, apple, application, something like that. And these are very easy to use. So if, if you're in, uh, in a contest or if you are doing some software development, you can use this particular try to basically do a lot of things. So yeah, it can tell you how many words in the try have a given prefix. It could check if the given word is present in the try or not. So is the word apple present in the try? You can check it will return a zero or a one. 
convert the try to a string or create a try using a string. This is deserialization seventh point and sixth is the serialization. So let's have a quick look at the code. I won't be explaining it in depth, but I would be more than happy if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comments and I'd be happy to explain a bit of the code. And if there are a lot of doubts, I'd make a video on how to code this thing up. If not the same thing, at least a basic idea of this, um, of how to get started basically. Yeah, so this is the try here. The structure try node is basically what one node of the try contains. Mm, yeah, and you can see there's a valid word. Uh, whether there is a word ending at this node or not, then words with prefix. So every node would represent going from the root to a node, it would represent a prefix. Okay. So how many words with this particular prefix are present in the try? Then we have an unordered map of children. So basically this word map from this node, there is an edge going outward label of that edge and what node do you reach from that edge? And I've used a map because you can have digits, you can have lowercase letters, uppercase letter, letters, you could have anything in the ASCII. So either I could have used a 256 element array or I could have used a map. Map seems easier to me. That's why I used a map. This is the edge label coming out of this node. And where does this edge label take me? Then we have this try data structure class. Let's ignore this for now. See, whenever you're reading a library, never read the private functions. These are meant for the one who wrote the library, unless you actually want to understand how it works. If you only want to use the library, never go reading about the private uh, members. You only need the public ones because those are the ones you will ever be interacting with. So the user never gets to interact with the root of the try. That is hidden. That is hidden to the user. And whatever, whatever happens to the root, that is taken care by the developer or the right author of the library. That's me. So you don't have to think too much about all these unless you really want to understand how this works. Yeah, so here are the public functions. This is basically the constructor. This constructor takes a vector of words and constructs a try having these words. I should have passed it by reference, but I wrote this library, I guess a few years back when I wasn't like, I am still not a very good coder, but at that time, back then I was uh, not that great either. Like at least not at the level I'm currently at. I'm not a good, I'm not at a good level even now, but yeah, hopefully you get the point. Anyway, so there are a lot of mistakes in here, like, and a lot of things that could have been better. Like it should have been constant and sent by reference. Same way here, I should have passed this by reference and marked it constant, but let's just ignore these things for now and uh, focus on the functionality. You can insert a word into the try, simply pass the word and this function will insert it for you. You can find out the number of words in the try. That's not very useful, but no, I guess that's useful. The number of words in the try. Okay. You can convert the try to a list of words. That's good. Simply find out what all words are present in the try and return them. Check whether this particular word is present in the try or not. How many words with this particular prefix are there in the try? This is the prefix that the user passes. Mm. And finally, try to string. This is the one that serializes the try. So guys, we're done. That's it. And this is the main function, how to use the try. Uh, it's not very hard. So guys, hopefully you liked the video and make sure if you think uh, this was something useful, which you might be able to use or probably improve or make better, then make sure that you hit the star button here. Do give me, uh, give the video a like subscribe to the channel that would be really helpful and guys thanks for watching make sure that you comment and let me know what things you liked about the video and what you disliked about the video anything you want to talk about so see you soon and hopefully i'll be coming up with more videos uh, very soon bye